Hello and welcome. I am very pleased to talk to you today because I'm going to be talking to you today about something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking to you about The Brightness of Stars, which is a book that I wrote with a group of people back in 2013 that was really a cathartic exercise in connection, collaboration and compassion. Um, and nearly 10 years on, I am having that book published as a third edition by Routledge, which is so exciting. So I just wanted to spend a few kind of videos with you and a few uh, times on the podcast, just introducing you to some of the people that are in the book so that you get a good sense of who and why and what is going on. So with that I would like to say hello Tim. Hello. 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 You're right. <laughs> so good to see you Tim, so good to see you and um, Tim it's great to talk to you because the book's very different now, it has my section, it has the original section and it has a third section but you are one of the originals who were in that first book and I am really aware that when I wrote that book, I did not have a publisher. I did not have um, the platform that I have now. We did not have podcasts. We did not have loads of social media groups. It was a different era. And I suppose my first question to you, Tim, is why on earth did you get involved in that project with me? <laughs> well, I think, well, first of all, obviously, I've got, uh, I hold you in high regard, Lisa, and you're a good friend of mine, and uh, I, I felt it would be nice to have, you know, my reflections and anecdotes in your book, and I thought it would make it, you know, a good, good read for whoever wants to pick it up as well, hearing about sort of people like myself who have been through, you know, care and, you know, give me an opportunity to talk about the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, um, but yeah, no, I think it was a, you know, a nice way of just kind of sharing, you know, my experiences of, of, of the care system and uh, just an opportunity to reflect on, on how life was back at the time, you know. Um, and obviously since then, things have changed, you know, quite significantly, as we know. Um, but yeah, just found it quite, um, in a way, I found it quite therapeutic as well to do that uh, reflection uh, as well. And uh, yeah, it was quite nice to kind of, you know, think about life and, and how things have changed and yeah and this time yeah this time you've done another reflection of that reflection as well which is quite yes, interesting because yeah. I don't know if I told you this at the time so I'm going to tell you this kind of live on the podcast um mm. I at the time I was really quite reluctant to share your story I don't know if mm. you knew that mm. no, um, I didn't know no uh, and no. and I had a long conversation with somebody and they said to me, which I just found really helpful, it's not for me to shape the narrative. Mm. Whoever comes forward, whatever they're bringing, mm -hmm. somebody will get something from that. And do you know what? People have said to me, I'm so pleased you included that story in the book because if that story hadn't been in there, I wouldn't have been able to relate to the other stories yeah yeah so there's a great yeah. lesson in there isn't there there is there is yeah um and that's it everyone's got their own experiences own perspectives um you know other people might not necessarily agree with it but it's their version of events isn't it you know mm. and I think you know when I look back at that previous narrative that I put together I mean you know I did some some parts of it um I was a little bit surprised about you know how I've written that down but I guess as time goes on, you you know you mature, you become more self-aware, you 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 potentially might become you know more reflective. I think that's what's happened in terms of me writing that second piece that I did all those years later. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's good. It's good to write, isn't it? It's a good way of expressing and reflecting, and I was happy to be part of part of it really. Um, and that reflective journey that you talk about is a real thread through the book. I mean, I read some of the things I wrote and I was quite shocked as well from a very different angle. Um, and I think one of the most, one of the things that was highlighted to me most was that the things that had troubled me then didn't trouble me now. Yeah. I dealt with them, they were gone. Um, yeah. And I do think the process of writing really helps with that, um, 
uh, process of of releasing and letting go and bringing to the fore what's left to deal with working on it and off it goes and so I had to do quite a bit of reflecting on my piece um, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted all of you the original contributors to have an opportunity to reflect on yours and every single person yeah you know that was it was just so beautiful to see those reflections and that process of recovery and healing in a way I think it goes to show doesn't it Lisa that you know um, certainly when I was writing the first time around it just goes to show really I guess how people deal with trauma and and, and the adversity and it, it's very different and it can change as time goes on as well I mean I think you know being honest uh, I mean I always wanted to make things look brighter more positive than perhaps what they were and always you know put people who looked after me and cared for me on a pedestal as if they were the, the best people you know on the planet mm. obviously as you saw with my second piece obviously I have I have reflected further and and sadly, that actually wasn't always the case. And it's not about me necessarily getting really critical because I'm still forever grateful that, you know, what the care system did for me and and all the rest of it. But at the same time, it, it wasn't actually always the best and it could have been much, much better. And of course, it's those reflections that I have now that I take forward into my day to day work, you know, managing children's homes. And actually, it's really important, I guess, for professionals, practitioners working with children in care that actually they are, I guess, curious more than anything when we are working with children in care and they are maybe saying that everything's all, all, all rosy, that actually that might not necessarily be the case. It could be their, their way of just dealing with the issues that are going on and they might be well repressing the bad things that are going on or they might well be in denial. I mean, obviously it's a classic, isn't it, Lisa? You know, we see on social media all the time where people only put the nice things, the positive things, but actually you don't tend to see the, the bad stuff as such do um, very often. Um, People want to put a best version, the best front on, best facade that they can to make it look like everything's all rosy. But as um, as I reflected in my second piece, obviously I did say, you can go into full detail, but th- there was a few things there that indicated that actually it wasn't all rosy. But that all said, you know, as I've always said to many people that I've worked with and spoke to, I mean, I'm still very gracious for what the care system did and I'm sure I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in today um, had it not been for the, you know, people that, supported me with building my resilience you know dealing with the traumas the demons and all the rest of it you know um so you know you have to make the most of you have to make the most of what's in front of you don't you and you can go one or two ways in life and that's that's why I came up with the name of course T-Junction for our company because that's what our mission is to try and support our children to take that right turn at the T-Junction um, yeah and I guess you know 10 years ago we were all in such different places I mean we lived in a very different world yeah yeah you know so bringing people together with shared experience doesn't sound that radical now but back then we didn't have Facebook groups and this group and that group and you know we're in a very different we are yeah climate than we were um and so if I think about that journey for you I mean you're you've done so much study you've got your you're coming up to having your third children's home you know, you're now a dad, you know, these are massive um, perspective shaping and changing experiences that undoubtedly will have shaped and continue to shape different ways of making sense of what happened to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And the biggest one is that you're now a dad. I'm a dad. (laughs) Yes, yes. Yeah. Daddy. Yes. Yes. Yeah which I'm loving. I'm absolutely loving it. Best job in the world. Uh, he's ever so cute. Bless him. He's lovely. Listen, everyone's um, going to love reading your um, piece, Tim. And, you know, thank you so much for just spending some time to just take take a little bit of time to introduce yourself and say hi. Um, and thank you so much for taking part in the beginning and also for coming back and uh, taking part in Uh, the third edition and I have to say only one person I wasn't able to get hold of to come back and do that so that's brilliant so thank you so much Tim you are most welcome go forth and create thank you thank you